this is the lesson going on from what I did a couple of days ago in part one of how to create some outside sounds into your play. So today I want to look at a couple of different things I used at the start of that um, and also in the start and the improvisation I did before as well. So um, what I talked about in the first lesson which I'll post below because if you've missed it it's in the description I will make sure that that's in there. Definitely watch that first, I think, because it's gonna go on nicely to this one. So what I talked about was the idea of playing in this, over this, sorry, this is in the key of um, like an E minor kind of thing, but because after a while you just hear that kind of static E, you can play E anything really, okay? Um, so I used the Dorian scale, the melodic minor, the mixolydian, so that's generally the, the ones I would use over that kind of funky, pop, fusion, jazzy kind of thing. I hate the word jazzy, but you get the idea. Um, so what I talked about in the first lesson was taking a shape like the Dorian scale, moving it up a semitone, higher, uh, so moving up one fret, then moving it back down to resolve it back into the key of E. So that would be going to F Dorian, then coming back to E. Or I'd move it down to E flat Dorian, and then bring it back to E. The, problem, the, the thing being is the most important thing we're playing it outside playing, and I can't stress this enough, is the timing aspect of it. One, when to do it, and two, making sure you're confident enough that you can play out of key, but making sure you can resolve it, because if you go out um, and then you're very hesitant with your playing, it's just gonna sound like you're not confident, and it's gonna be like, ah, you know, squeaky bum time, but you really wanna be able to be really confident <coughs> with what you play. Um, going out so then when you do come back in at the right time it sounds really like, like you meant to do it okay <laughs> which you are meant to do it but if you if you're really hesitant it can sound like it's accidental okay and we've all hit bum notes on gigs and well everywhere so we're only human but we wanted to intentionally hit those wrong notes but be able to resolve it um, so what I did at the start of this lesson uh, or the start of this video sorry was I used the particular scale that I like the sound of and it's used a lot in, in the jazz world or, and it's a really important scale to use if you like this kind of playing. It's the Lydian dominant scale, okay? So the Lydian dominant scale, well let's go back to the major scale. So the major scale, if I'm talking E major, okay? Because I'll always bring things back to the major scale because that's where all other scales are made from. So the major scale, if I'm talking intervals, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to the root, okay, uh, all the one. So the Lydian scale, so let's move away up to the Lydian dominance. So the Lydian scale now is one, two, three, sharp, four, okay, so what I've done is taken the fourth and sharpen it. So this would be my four. But Okay, so this is the Lydian scale. So it's really nice to play over major seven chords. If you hear major seven chords, you very much hear a Lydian scale over it. Um, but yeah, but we, we want the Lydian dominant. Okay, now the Lydian dominant is the same as the Lydian scale, but it has the flat seven in it. So instead of having a natural seven, sorry, ah, I'm just gonna hit that E as a drone, okay? So instead of it being, we wanna flatten that seven to this, okay? Which is on um, the G string, okay? Seventh fret on the G string, which is a D note. But again, I'm not thinking note names in this, I'm thinking everything from the root. So this is an E, one, two, three, sharp four, five, six, flat seven. So this is your Lydian dominant scale, and it comes from the B melodic minor. Okay, so it's the same thing, E Lydian dominant is the same as B melodic minor. I won't go into detail of why it is, but it's part of the mode um, of E melodic minor. Um, it's the fourth mode. But, so some people will think when they're playing E uh, Lydian dominant, they'll be just thinking B melodic minor instead. <laughs> I would still think of it from the root, so I would, um, and I'll tell you why. Because I want to target the sharp four, that's a sharp four, but from the B, it's the major seven, so I don't want to be thinking like that. I want to think of it like this is the sharp four, so it makes you phrase differently. 
I'll be expanding on some lessons about this because I think it's a really important subject um, uh, about how to learn your scales and what's the most efficient way to learn them and yeah I will do a lesson on this I promise because this is really important and it ties in with a lot of things but anyway so a Lydian dominant scale we sound great over this and I will play it against the track now just so you can hear and I'll really target that sharp four now Lydian dominant like I say you normally play it over dominant seventh chord dominant ninth 13 okay so they sound really great over that it's got a really nice tension um, and it's used in blues and jazz and lots so of you hear but you can use it in anything okay so I'll use it over this now so you can hear so there's that sharp four Okay, so that is the Lydian dominant scale. Um, I wouldn't use it that like that all the time. I just wanted you to be able to hear it. So I'll use it a bit more sparingly now, um, just so you can hear what it sounds like in context. Okay, so that was just a bit more, you know, still probably a bit too much, but I just want you to get that sound. Uh, the second thing I used for some outside stuff, which I used in the first uh, video as well, was the use of, was taking a shape and then moving it, um, moving it higher or lower in certain intervals around the neck. So let's just say off the top now, I just take a shape like, um, okay, let me just do something like, Okay, so that's the flat three, bending it slightly almost so it hits the third, but not quite. Okay, so as in bending to the third interval of E, so. But I'm, and then I'm hitting nine on the G, okay, which is my root, and then I'm pulling off to the flat seven of E, so that's the seventh fret on the G string. So what I might do to create an outside sound, play a particular shape. Uh, and say move it up minor thirds. So minor third meaning every three frets. So I might go. But again, like we did with the side stepping, I have to be able to resolve it or it's gonna sound pretty crap. So. Okay, so say if I did that and then I went. Um, something like that, maybe I'll try and resolve it like that. Okay, and I might try and resolve it. So again, like I talked about in the first video, I would normally do this and maybe where the drummer would do a fill, I would go outside, so he does a fill and then he comes back in on the one. So that's when I would bring it back into key. So I'll try that now, just off the cuff. So what I'll do is I'll get into playing first and then I'll let you know when I'm gonna go outside, okay? So I'll start it first. So, whatever I did. But you get the idea, I'm just trying to resolve it. I'll just try it again with something else. So I could just do something like, um, something like that. Uh, and then I could maybe go, um, yeah, maybe I'll bend it to the, bend it up to the root from the major seven. 
So, um... Yeah, that. Again, this is real trial and error, so this is things I'm just coming up with on the spot, but I'm just giving the, uh, um, idea now. You could do it, you know, randomly in, in, on the track. You don't always have to do it on that last bar, but it sounds better to bring it in there. So like, if I do it elsewhere. So I could something like. So I'll try it again. Yeah, that's basically what I was doing at the start. I was using Lydian Dominant and taking a shape based thing and then moving it either a minor third up or a minor third down, but you can move it up two frets. And just It just brings that tension in. Um, if you have a look at the part one, I do it in the first part, I think. Uh, but I also try to do it in that second part, I can't remember. Um, but you get the idea. So there's a couple of different ways where you can bring the tension in. One, start using the Lydian Dominant scale and two, taking a shape and moving up a particular minor thirds or every tone or two tones or whatever you want to do. It doesn't really matter, you stick to the same shape. The notes aren't important, I'm making sure my rhythm and my timing is good and that's what's gonna get you that kind of sound. Like, uh, check out some Guthrie stuff. Um, he's brilliant at that, he'll, he'll take a lot of shape bass playing and move it. Um, yeah, like I say, it takes it takes some good practice and to do, you know, on the spot here. I'm not going to get it absolutely um, uh, perfect. So, you know, you may want to sit down and write some lines where you do that. Uh, but yeah, that that's the key. But it sounds really cool. So if you can mix in the both with the sidestepping, with um, the Lydian dominant, you're going to get that kind of close to, to that kind of, uh, that guy's style. Uh, all those sorts of guys like I talked about in the first video. So yeah. Have a go at that, let me know how you do, and uh, yeah, onwards and upwards to the next one. Have a good day.